Whether you prefer to do your battery drain testing with a multimeter or your parasitic draw testing with an oscilloscope and amp clamp, these five tips will help you work smarter, save time, so you can find these problems faster. So for the first tip, we're gonna be checking out the battery drain test with the multimeter and the ammeter function. And one of the big problems with doing a battery drain test with a multimeter is that you have to open the circuit and that can cause other problems um, adding time to your diagnostic testing. Using this method will mean that the time and date won't be reset after disconnecting the battery because we won't be disconnecting the battery. On a lot of vehicles as well, you have to end up reprogramming all the radio stations. And if you're unlucky, then you'll have things like steering angle sensor and tire pressure monitoring uh, systems to reset and possibly others. This is my personally my favorite method. This is the way I always used to do it. So let's have a look at uh, how you can save time doing this uh, check. Okay, so we're gonna get the uh, multimeter ready. We're gonna set it to DC current and then swap that lead over. Don't forget to put it back after so you don't blow the fuse in your multimeter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect up the multimeter first. So if you put your black lead on the negative side of the battery, make sure it's got a nice connection there. And then we're also gonna put the positive lead on the chassis side. And then you can see there that at the minute there's no current flowing through the multimeter. Now, this car is already asleep, or it should be anyway. So make sure you've got some good connections. And now what I'm gonna do is disconnect the ground lead from the chassis side of the car. Be careful not to drop the, uh, the nut. So here we are. Okay, there we go. So now we have just disconnected that ground lead there. We're now reading 0.005 amps, which shows us that we've got a good drain and the, and the car's asleep. Remember, the maximum drain is around 20 to 50 milliamps. Some will ex accept more around 80 milliamps, but that nice tip there, you know, that's gonna save you time, save you multimeter, get you on the job faster. Now, it might not always be so easy to access that, so let's have a look at another way of doing it if the ground cable isn't so easy to access. Okay, so this car is also already asleep. Let's see how this works. And all you're gonna to need to do that same test on this one is you're gonna need that crocodile clip, a banana connector with the possibility to, to go in the back of the connectors there, okay? and a back probe. So what I'm gonna do is connect that back pinning probe to that end. We're gonna connect the crocodile clip to this end. What we're then going to do is put the multimeter lead into the back of the crocodile clip. So that's what we've got now. So we've got the crocodile clip and the back probe on this end of the cable. And as you can see, this one's a little bit more difficult to get to. So. Uh, there's also a few other cables going off that ground. That ground goes down there and then onto that body point there. So it's not impossible, but it's a little bit more difficult. Okay, so what we're going to do is we will connect up the red lead to that chassis ground that is already there. Okay, should be okay. And then we'll slacken off that ground point. Be careful not to lose connection because we don't want to wake the car up. Okay, and then we're gonna put that black lead on there like that. So I'm just holding that back probe on here. And then I'm gonna carefully lift up that terminal, making sure that we keep the connection. And now I'm gonna put that onto the battery. We should now be able to take that off. And there we are. We're now running through the multimeter and we haven't lost the connection. You can see there that we're draining down at around about three milliamps. So a really quiet drain on this car there. So that's a nice way of working smarter, not waking up the vehicle, not damaging your multimeter fuses. This second tip will help those of you that want to use your amp clamps for doing parasitic drain tests. The problem with these smaller amp clamps is that the, the hole going through the jaws is usually too small for the negative ground cable on most vehicles. It's really important that these jaws are closed when we perform any current drain test. Okay, so if we put this clamp around 
this battery cable here. You can see there that it kind of looks like it's, it's on and it's round, but you can see there's like a little bit of a gap there, which means it's just not suitable for doing this test. They need to be absolutely closed together. So I've got the PicoScope 2204A connected up here and we're on PicoScope 7. Remember this is PicoScope T and M, not the PicoScope Automotive. And what we're going to do is something similar to what we did with the multimeter. So I'm going to connect this lead here. Ideally, guys, make sure you're using one with a fuse in line. Okay, I couldn't find my fused uh, connector, but that's really important. Make sure you use a fuse so that the cable doesn't melt if the car wakes up, okay? So we're gonna connect that around there. And then now look, we can use the amp clamp on this here. And similar to what we did before, we can disconnect the cable there. And now all of the current is going through the amp clamp. And you can see that we've got it set up here and it's currently draining at around 1.2 amps because I, I just woke this car up. So let's leave that to uh, go to sleep and see what happens. While that's going to sleep, I'll just tell you about tip number three, and that is to get yourself over to mechanicmindset.com and check out the new membership that we've got running on there. So currently it's available for $10 a month and there's lots of technical training in there already that you can access like volt drop testing, sensor testing, diagnostic process, and we've even got a mini course on battery drain diagnostics. There's a free taster so you can see what the platform's like to make sure it works for you. Even better, there's a phone application where you can access all of the training on the job to reference that important information when you need it most. Make sure you go and check that out. Tip number four is a way to identify where your drain is coming, coming from once you've confirmed it using either your uh, ammeter or your amp clamp. So what we're gonna do is use the fuse volt drop method. Now, the fuse volt drop method is um, based on the fact that when current is flowing through a piece of wire or a fuse, the voltage will drop ever so slightly. Now, there is a chart that you need to uh, refer to called a fuse volt drop chart, and I'll make that available in a link below. So the idea is that you put your leads across the top of the fuse and measure the volt drop reading. And you can see there that we've got 15 millivolts on that fuse there, meaning that there's some current going through there. Now the benefit of doing this is that you don't have to remove the fuse and then put it back in to wake the car up to confirm whether that's where your drain was coming from. Now, one thing you really need to be aware of is that if we go up to this fuse now, that says one millivolts, 0 0.001. This one says one millivolt, and this one says no millivolts, okay? Now, this multimeter here is not really suitable for this test. Going down to one millivolt just isn't enough, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in the Mac automotive multimeter that I've got here, and we can see that this multimeter has a millivolt setting on there okay so we're going to go on to millivolt so when we go to millivolts now you can see that we get millivolts down to a decimal place so we can read one tenth of a millivolt so 0 0.1 millivolts so let's just go and do that same test again we'll measure that 10 amp fuse there Okay, we've got 14 millivolts, which was similar to what we had with the fluke meter. Okay, that 15 amp fuse, we've got around one millivolt, which again was similar. On the five amp fuse though, you can see there that we've got 0 0.6 millivolts. Now, that makes a big difference on the fuse volt drop chart. Um, what's more interesting is that the 20 amp fuse here has actually got 0 0.2 millivolts going through it. And if we take a look at the fuse volt drop chart, we'll be able to see that that equates to a significant amount of current that you just wouldn't have picked up if you were using the fluke meter there. So fuse volt drop chest, really good measurement to do. Make sure that you've got a multimeter that will read down to millivolts. The standard meter might not be up to the job. However, it might pick up that you've got some 
current going through a fuse if it's a large amount of current. Okay, so the last tip I've got for you, tip number five is the automotive world's best kept secret, the thermal camera. So I've got this Seek thermal camera here. Um, this is for the iPhone. I like this camera because I can record videos for you guys and edit them quite easily. But there are lots of other thermal cameras out there. There's especially one called the Fleur, which has two cameras next to each other so you can see what's going on. And as you can see now, we can pick up all the different hot areas on the vehicle. Now, what we're looking at here, if you can see that little heat spot there, okay, as you can see, all the covers are on the vehicle, okay? And what we're actually looking at is the fuse box, okay? So that fuse box there is giving us some heat and it's not, not very warm, but it's a little bit warm. And if we open that up, what we will see is that there's a, a relay behind here, or oh, it's that one there, I can feel it now, it's nice and warm. So these thermal cameras will really save you time in looking for different battery drain problems. They're just really sensitive and can save you a lot of time. Okay, so I hope you like those tips and they help you with your parasitic battery drawer testing. Um, if there's any other little tips that you're aware of that will help you with looking for battery drain problems, then let us know in the comments below.